Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance is scheduled to be the featured speaker tonight at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, which has thus far been devoid of major controversies and disagreements as the party coalesces around Donald Trump. For more on the convention, we welcome Chad Haywood. He's a consultant and former GOP state party executive director. Good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Ted. Uh, what do you think, from what you've seen so far, yeah. what do you think? Well, you're seeing a lot of unity right now, and that's sort of the, the plot line. Uh, all the messages, obviously a lot different for context than 2016 when President Trump went into the convention and the party was deeply divided. Um, typically these conventions, we do have delegates for a purpose, but when the nominee is already decided and, and strong going into the convention, uh, it's much more of a theme of unity and an opportunity to present a unified front. There's obviously some subplots here with this appointment. Um, there's still the U.S. Senate race, there's a, a majority leader race going on underneath it, some disagreements within the party on foreign policy and a few other issues. But right now you have a, a very united party around the president. Uh, the idea of, of unity was obviously a theme beforehand and really it was accentuated with the assassination attempt over the weekend. But are we talking unity, party unity, or are we talking national unity? Because I, I'm hearing yeah. a little bit of both. Yeah, you're going to get a little bit of both. I think with what happened Saturday, just to address that, it, it's unbelievable to me that that just happened on Saturday. With, with social media and 24-7 news, it, it's hard to believe that that was just a few days ago. And so we all talked about taking a pause, watching our words. And the convention's largely done that in some ways, not, not nearly as partisan, more focused on issues but it's still a presidential year. Mm -hmm. This is still a party convention. And it's also a very big country and a, and a big party with a big tent. And so you're gonna see unity right now around the president in a party convention. I look forward to hearing the tone and the, the substance of uh, J.D. Vance's speech tonight and also the president tomorrow. Um, not all Republicans are there. David Schweikert isn't there. Juan Siscomani isn't there. Doug Ducey uh, isn't there. Your thoughts on that? I don't read too much into that, and, and I'll tell you why. Um, for Arizonans, we have this late summer primary, and it's earlier now than it's ever been, but it's not uncommon for Republicans that are up for re-election to stay here in the summer during the primaries and, and campaign. It's not always a great look to spend sort of three to five days if you're not an actual delegate voting with a a procedural reason or you're there to speak. So you didn't see a political reason in the sense of I don't want to get too aligned with maybe some volatile rhetoric that might come out of here. I, I didn't because many of us were right in the middle of elections. Uh, when these conventions have happened in the past, I, I worked for the party for four years and you were still sort of manning your post in the middle of the election. Interesting. Uh, did you see Carrie Lake's address? I did. What'd you think of it? Uh, I thought it was great in terms of her, her focus on border security and the drug and fentanyl problem. Um, I don't know that she said anything different that we haven't already heard, but it was definitely a, a good speech for the crowd, for the audience. Was it a good speech for those in Arizona who might still be wondering what they're gonna do? Border security is an interesting issue. Um, Typically in a base turnout election, like a, a midterm, uh, that's always been a really strong issue in Arizona, going back decades, right? You can look mm -hmm. at 2010, um, this it flared up again in 2018 when Governor Ducey ran. What's a little different now is that it, it really cuts across party lines. It's become really a top issue nationwide. So typically I'd hear a speech like that and think, oh, that, that's a Republican audience, but I, I think it actually cuts across with independent and other voters. So with that in mind, did she help herself or hurt herself? I think, she, I think she helped herself. She helped herself. Yeah. Um, the, the focus, I, I've heard a number of people say the focus is on uh, Democrats and what they have taken, I think they, the line is they have taken voters for granted. I've heard that more than once coming out of this yeah. convention. That makes sense to you? It does based on just the research we've seen over the last few months. Um, President Trump and Republicans have actually done better with categories of voters traditionally that have been aligned with Democrats. I think that you know, if you look at the inflation issue and as immigration bubbles up and people tie that into economic angst, um, the party in power and the president, uh, rightfully or wrongfully, they're always going to take the responsibility and the heat on inflation and the economy. And early on in the president's term, there were Democrat-leaning economists that said some of these spending packages have contributed somewhat to inflation. So, um, you know, there's some data to, to, to sort of back that up. And so I think if uh, you look at non-traditional 
uh, coalitions for Republicans, this is their chance to be able to reach out to different people on those economic issues. Is J.D. Vance a chance to reach out and make what you described as a big tent yeah. even bigger? What did you think of that selection? Because, again, I've yeah. heard that some uh, some of the MAGA devotees not entirely pleased about it. What do you make of this? Yeah. So you're going to get a mixed response, but if you look traditionally at the vice president's role, they do play sort of an, uh, an attack role. Uh, if you look uh, traditionally, they'll, they'll take shots. They're punching up at the other party's nominee. J.D. Vance is sharp-tongued. He's very bright. And I don't know if you saw President Trump just minutes ago. Uh, the Trump campaign said they're not going to announce vice presidential debates because they don't even know who the vice presidential nominee is going to be. So they're having a little bit of fun with the chaos on the other side going into the convention. I will just say, though, President Trump, politics is, is one part policy and one part theater, capturing attention. President Trump's an entertainer. Um, he did cameos in movies going back decades, right? right. He had a best-selling book. He, uh, he had a reality TV show. And J.D. Vance had a book. He had a Netflix movie made of his book with big-name actors. And so that matters to someone who, who checks the New York media market and follows ratings and so real quickly then, bottom line, does J.D. Vance help or hurt Donald Trump? I think he helps. I think the president, if he wants to round out and unify the party, will probably find other appointments, cabinet picks. You'll remember uh, back in 16, he announced the types of judges he would select, mm -hmm. which had never been done before, to appease and comfort conservative voters that weren't comfortable with him. So you might see some of that post-convention as they look at polls and they see, uh, you know, maybe where they're weak or where they, where they need to round out uh, some of the message they're sharing. Well, it sounds like conservative voters, at least at the convention, are very comfortable with Donald Trump. Chad Haywood, again, political consultant. Thanks for your insight. We appreciate it. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.